I am standing in front of a large and very dense stand of knotweed. Knotweed is a really aggressive invasive plant that's growing all over the island. Luckily, I brought a machete. So this island is really biodiverse and there are a lot of species that I would never want to cut down with a machete. But this guy behind me just grows everywhere and it takes over and dominates the soil and uh, I don't feel bad cutting a path through to make the island more accessible. Here we go! Check out this knotweed grove. It's like being in a jungle. So the mispronounceable Latin name of Japanese knotweed is Phalliopia japonica. It's a dicot and it's native to Japan and Korea, generally Eastern Asia. And around here, it's super duper invasive. You can see it just takes over the landscape completely. One of the cool things about Japanese knotweed is that it has hollow stems and you can do some pretty interesting things with them. Let me show you. If you cut the tubes just right, you can get them to resonate. So I've come across a deer path. Here is a pile of deer dung and all around it, like there and there, are deer footprints. So you can sort of see behind me there's a very small clearing in the brush. So that's a path made by deer to get through this Japanese knotweed. Deer don't have a machete, so they're much less destructive than human. But it makes sense that I would stumble across their path and use it because they've done a little bit of my work for me. Here's a special mushroom. It's Ganoderma aplanatum, also known as artist conch. What's cool about these guys is that you can carve into them. Nice designs. So I've come to a clearing on the northern side of the island. And above me, there's this beautiful willow tree branching out over the water. Willows really like to grow right on the water's edge and lean out and catch the light on top of the river. Willows are cool for a number of reasons. One is that their branches, their branches hang like this, and so they're really long and thin and flexible. So they're really great for things like framing for paper mache projects, or you know, just anytime you need something strong and long and flexible, willow branches will do a great trick. Another notable thing about willow is its bark. Its bark contains a number of interesting compounds, most notably aspirin for headaches comes from willow bark, but also lots of different plant hormones. I don't know their names. I have been told that if you want to get a tree cutting to root, like if you cut an apple branch and you wanted it to take root, if you soaked it in water with willow bark, the hormones from the willow bark would stimulate the apple tree to take root. So that's a pretty cool thing. Here's another interesting footprint. These belong to muskrat. You can see little toes here and here. Muskrat is an unusually large aquatic rodent that lives in marshlands and rivers and lakes all across North America. I've never seen one before, but now I've seen their tracks. And this right here is a dryad saddle. Dryad saddles are notable because they smell like watermelon. Isn't that crazy? A mushroom that smells like watermelon. So they're quite big. This one is a little too old for me to pick. I don't think it would be very tasty. But this one, these little young guys, I'm gonna pick them and bring them home for dinner with me. Check out all of these dryad saddles. They're so pretty. I can imagine a little fairy riding on top of them, hopping. It would go, a boom, a boom, a boom, boom. <laughs> 